mystery comes from a man in Podunk, Indiana, whose story is so astounding, it leaves even the top experts scratching their heads. This mystery involves a damaged chainsaw. In tonight's edition of Unsolved Bowler Mystery. This is a lot cheaper than buying this or buying this whole start. Kid. Yeah, it's on the ground there. Go ahead, help yourself. Oh, great. This thing looks nice. Now, TJ, you know you gotta mix the oil and gas with that, right? Yeah, I know. I worked at Tim Burr, okay, dude? All right, yeah, well, don't get smart with me, right? Now, return that with a full tank of gas, just how you're getting it. Uh, there's no gas in here, dude. Look, you little twerp. Do what I say. Return it with a full tank of gas. Otherwise, that'll be the last time you use anything of mine. Oh, okay. All right, dude. All right. Chill. All right, thanks, Ed. You're welcome, TJ. You're a good kid. Tell your mom I said hi. This is going to be excellent. Oh. What the heck? Oh, my chainsaw. I didn't even know that kid brought it back. Oh, good. Because I'm going to need it for tomorrow. <laughs> All right, I got a couple big maples to take down. This thing ought to work right. Oh. Ah. Ah, what the heck? This thing worked good before I learned to do that little twerp. I better not have messed it up. Great, now I gotta take it to a mower shop. Have Gerald look at it. Yeah. Way to go, you little twerp. That's why you don't learn your stuff out to people. After a few failed attempts at starting the chainsaw, Ed decides he should take it to his local mower shop and have it inspected by a professional. So yeah, I don't know what he did to it. Well, maybe you could take a quick look at it and get it running. All right, well, let's first, let's take this cover off and take a peek inside. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. That's some mind boggling stuff there. I ain't never seen nothing like that before. Either have I. What would cause something like that? I don't know. No one had ever seen anything quite like what was witnessed in the shop that day. No logical explanation. Even after investigators interrogated the prime suspect, TJ. That concludes tonight's episode of Unsolved Mower Mystery. Now there's your dinner. Pterodactyl here. And today we're going to go over a problem we ran into on this here Kroller Command V Twin. So I'm going to give you a little story about this. Came in. This tractor came in, it ran, it just ran real bad. It ran real rich, almost like the choke was out. So we tuned it up, took the carburetor apart, and we found the needle, rubber tip of the needle was starting to come off. So we got another needle, put the needle in, it still ran exactly the same. 
So we were really scratching our heads. What's going on with this thing? Why is it running so rich? So we tried a bunch of different things. Nothing worked. And then we decided, well, maybe it's got a valve issue. So we pulled the heads off and we discovered that on these vertical engines, they added this little valve to help control oil from coming up, you know, into the, into the valve area. They wanted to control that oil. So they added this little reed valve. As you can see, it says, breather design changed. So you may not have this on your engine, depending on when it was made. I don't think it's on the horizontal shafts. I think it's only on the verticals because of the oil level in that and it's laying, you know, laying down. So we noticed that one of them flapper needle or reed valves was, was broken and missing. And it's like, okay, well that little piece of metal is real thin, it's inside the motor somewhere. So we thought, okay, it's probably just that valve, that reed valve is gone and we'll put a new reed valve on and it'll be fine. So we put the new reed valve on, we put it all back together, ran exactly the same again. So we're thinking, geez, what the heck could it be? Why is this thing running so bad? Like running real rich, like the, like the choke is on. So we thought, you know what? Maybe that little piece of reed valve got in there and did some internal damage. So me and Elkskins were thinking, and Elkskins said, well, maybe that piece of reed valve ruined the compression release on the camp and it's bumping the valve all the time. Instead of, you know, flinging out of the way, maybe it's stuck and it's just bumping the valve. So we started the motor up again, and we stuck our hand in front of the inlet of the carburetor. Now, if you know anything about engines, you know, it sucks in a lot of air. So it should suck your hand in there. It should try to pull your hand in there and choke it off. We stuck our hand in front of the carburetor and it just kept running and running and running. I even took a rag, a shop rag, and shoved the shop rag into the mouth of the carburetor and it still ran. It ran exactly the same, crappy like it did with nothing on it. And I know what you're thinking, well, it's a manifold, you got a manifold problem. No, it ain't the manifold because we put a different manifold on it. We have the aluminum aluminum manifold that was on there and we changed it. It's got to be inside. And I know what you're thinking, it probably jumped time, it probably jumped time. It can't jump time because it's gear to gear. It's not like a car that's got a timing chain where the chain can get loose and the engine can jump time. This is gears on gears. And the gear on the, on the crankshaft that doesn't come off, it's part of the crankshaft. So what we're gonna do here, we already drained all the oil out. We're gonna pull the engine off, we're gonna pull the oil pan off, we're gonna take a peek inside and see exactly what's going on with this thing. All right, we got the engine out, we got it flipped over, got all the bolts out of the oil pan. So let's get cracking, let's get cracking her open. Ugh. They got it glued together. There we go. Let's see what we find. Let's see what we find inside here. It's causing all this malfeasance. All right, I need to get a rag. Here's one. Just take a quick look at a couple things. All right, there's our cam timing. What's the chances of us getting that right on the... There's a shim washer. Let's pull the cam out. Take a look at the compression 
release. Don't want to come out. Come out, come out wherever you are. We got tension on the, because of the lifters. I gotta pull the valve covers off. All right, give me a minute. All right, got valve covers off, loosened up the rockers, because we had too much tension. Now we can pull this out. And what do we got here? Look at that, stuck. Oh, there it goes. This thing was stuck. So that's what it was doing. Kept bumping the, kept pumping the, bumping the valve. Couldn't get that word out. Kept bumping the valve. and making it run like crap. So remember that. You got an engine that's running real rich, like the choke's on, stick your hand in front of the intake, in front of the carburetor, and if it ain't sucking any, ain't pulling your hand in there, or like I said, it wouldn't even pull a rag in there. I took one of these red rags Stuck it right in front of the carburetor and it wouldn't even pull it in. That's when we knew there was something wrong. That's when Elkskin said, I bet you that compression release is either broken or stuck. And he was right, and there he is right there. Look at him. Yeah, I got a couple questions, Terrell. What's that? If we put that right back in, well, what's the chances of it getting stuck again? Well, we got to find that little piece of reed valve. I think that might have had something to do with it. All right. I mean, it was stuck, but it wasn't. I mean, I was able to unstick it with my hand. Elk skins, you know, he's the human shop rag. That's what we call him. There he is. <laughs> the human shop rag. All right, let's get the magnet on a stick and fish around in there a little bit. We did dig around through the dipstick tube we took out, and we did dig around with the magnet on a stick before we disassembled, disassembled it, and we did find some little pieces of metal, like strands, and that's when we thought, okay, let's take it apart and see. But I don't see nothing in there. I don't see where that little reed valve went that broke off. Could it be inside the oil pump? Well, the oil pump's got a screen on it. Oh, okay. There's a screen on the bottom here, Elk Skin. You know what, you're the human shop rag. Why don't you lay on that? No, thank you. Mop that up <laughs> with your shop rag-like body. I got a better idea. All right, so we're gonna reassemble it now that we got that unstuck, and then we're gonna run it. We'll show you that part. I'm gonna slurp some of this oil out. The Kroller compression own release works on this, see? See these here? When you push that in, they go away. So when the engine's at rest, this is what's bumping the exhaust valve when it comes around. So by this being stuck, you know, the engine's going to start because that's how the compression release works. You crank the motor over, and when the motor starts, centrifugal force pulls this weight away because this is spinning. So centrifugal force pulls this away. These little guys go back inside their hole 
and then the, the lifter just rides over that. So by this being stuck, the motor ran, but it was almost like an extra load, like an extra lift. So it ran, but it kept bumping the, the valve open, making it run real crappy. It ran, and the guy was actually using it. He said, I was using I was babying it. So he was cutting grass with it. Like I said, it would run. It would start up. You'd have to choke it. But it just ran like it was running way too rich. It wouldn't idle either. Yeah, and it wouldn't idle. When we'd idle it down, it wouldn't idle. It would just die. And it was just like really scratching our heads on that. So, yeah. This got stuck. And I think it had something to do with that little valve breaking off, which we can't find. But it's working now. So that's where that reed valve is. It's underneath that little plate. There's a little reed valve under there. So this is what it looks like out of there. See, it's a little thin piece of metal. And here's our old one that had broke off. So when it broke off, this piece that broke off went through this passage here. There's a passage on each side. So it, it fell through here, and what's on the other side? The camshaft. This is where the camshaft sits. So the motor is sitting like this. And that, that pocket is right here. So that reed valve snapped off and landed on here. The broken piece. And somehow, part of it got wedged under here. That wouldn't let this move. Even though we didn't find anything, it must have got chewed up. Because all we did find was like a little thread of metal when we pulled it out with the magnet. So we thought, okay, when we crack the motor open, we're gonna find more pieces of that reed valve. But we didn't. So that's what made this engine run the way it did. It was driving us nuts for about two days, chasing our tails when all it was was a piece of that reed valve got stuck under this weight and wouldn't let this thing move. It was stuck like that. We got it all back together and it's running exactly the same. So that compression release on that camshaft has got to be bad. It's not flinging out of the way. So here, we're going to start it and show you what it was doing. it keeps kicking those valves open because that compression young release is bad. So I went out of the junkyard because we got a couple of junk engines out there, Crawler Command Twins, and this was the first camshaft I pulled out. And if you notice, this lobe is all wore down. It's not pointy like this one. So this is garbage. Oh yeah, and if you notice, another thing, it doesn't have a compression release on it. So this is scrap metal. So then I went, cracked open another one that had thrown rod on it. And this cam is good. But again, no compression release, which I really don't think we even need. So, pull the engine back off, pull it apart, 
we're gonna put this cam in and see how it runs. But you see how crappy it was running? Running rich. And I think there's something wrong with that compression release. So here we are, third time's the charm. Had this cam in and out twice, and now we put that other one in. So there's something wrong with this cam to where when it's running, it doesn't have enough centrifugal force to, to pull this out. So we put that other cam in, and now we're gonna fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Shut up! Let me put the parking brake on, hold the choke. Give it some gas, and then pull the choke. Pressure release, we looked that camshaft up, that camshaft's two hundred dollars. So we put that used one in. You notice it does have a little hard spot where it cranks once in a while, but just gonna have to live with that. We're trying to save the guy money. And speaking of camshafts, we got another one in here which we did a video on. This is on this craftsman with this single intact. They changed the design of this camshaft like three times already Briggs. Oh look, there's supposed to be a compression release there. Where did it go? Where did you go, compression release? Oh, here we are. Here's our compression release. Laying in the bottom of the crankcase. So, we're putting a cam in this one. Gave the customer the bad news and they said go ahead and put a new cam in it. We'll have to get all the extra all the extra parts out of there that are laying in there. So there you have it. That was our problem with that Kroller Command Twin with that compression release was giving us the flux and driving us crazy. So subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All. Go to our web store. Get some tarot apparel, you gotta be wearing that tarot apparel while you're working on these things and riding on your mower and cutting grass and watching my videos and just wear it all the time. Just buy like 10 of these shirts. So you'll have one for every day. And then follow me with your junk engines with bad camshafts on Facebook and Instagram. Come on, come on, catch up. Get your camshaft, your broken camshaft. Let's drop my glasses. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Headache engine giving me the plot. Finally got it done. Now we can get it back to the guy. Update. Shortly after this broadcast, a local tipster called our hotline and reported someone stole the chainsaw from TJ's garage. That person was Roscoe Jenkins. Although he's been apprehended and pleaded guilty to the crime, still to this day, no one will ever know what really happened to that chainsaw. Meaning it is still an unsolved mower mystery. <laughs>